On the 30th of May, 1861, the burned hulk of the USS Merrimack was recovered by the Confederate States of America, and it was placed in a dry dock at the Gosport Navy Yard. Once the United States received confirmation that the Confederacy was converting the vessel into an iron-plated warship, they decided to construct their own to counter it, and dozens of designs were submitted, but the most important of them ended up being the USS Monitor, which would face the Virginia at the Battle of Hampton Roads on March 9, 1862. Two other ships were selected for construction along with the Monitor, and these would end up being the USS New Ironsides and the USS Galena. The only reason that Monitor was realistically selected is because Erickson was promising the ship could be delivered within a hundred days of construction beginning, which, with the Confederacy already having a head start on the Virginia conversion, time was at the essence. For this video, we are not going to be looking into the financial side of the Monitor's construction, but actually looking at how the ship was physically assembled, with most regards going into the ship's hull and machinery. For this video, we are going to largely ignore the turret, as I have already done a video that covers the turret's construction. I will link it in the description below. There are three primary yards that would be constructing the monitor. The Continental Ironworks was the primary location. This is where the hull was being constructed, and all other components would be delivered to it to be placed onto the hull. The Delamater Ironworks would be constructing the ship's machinery, and the Novelty Ironworks would be constructing the turret. The reason for having three shipyards construct monitor is because the pre-assembly phase was regarded as the most complex and time-consuming process, so having the turret and machinery assembled elsewhere would save time on actually assembling them on the ship, as each piece would be in order and properly labeled with white paint. Once the turret and machinery went through their pre-assembly stage, they would be disassembled and then shipped to Continental for installation on the hull. The 100-day countdown for Monitor's construction would commence on Sunday, the 15th of September, 1861, with the first two weeks being wholly occupied by working out a detailed design draft. On the 4th of October, 1861, the contract with the United States Navy was finalized and signed. On the 25th of October, 1861, Monitor's keel plates were finally laid and the ship's construction officially commenced. But the keel was not the first components of the hull to be laid, as due to how the bottom of the ship was shaped, there were two strakes of iron plates that were laid beside the keel before the keel could be laid on itself. The reason the keel was not laid first is because Monitor did not actually have a standardized keel, but rather it had what is known as a false keel, which is the central line of hull plating at the bottom of the ship. It curved out slightly to create a waterway with inside the ship, and this is what would create the bottom of the ship. There was no primary framework that would connect at the bottom of the ship. The framework on Monitor would connect directly into the floor of the vessel and then run up its 38 degree sloped sides, which would connect to the bottom of the upper hull, or what I refer to as the raft. Monitor's lower hull sides would be comprised out of 86 different plates of three different sizes. There would be 38 plates that were 36 inches wide on one end and 36 inches wide on the other end, 26 plates that were 36 inches wide on one end and 30 inches wide on the other end, and 22 plates that were 36 inches wide on one end and 28 inches wide on the other. All of these plates were 11 feet long. Along with these 86 plates, an order was placed for 88 butt straps that were 11 feet long and 5 inches wide, and these would hold the 86 plates together at their connections. In early October, Erickson had written a letter that confirmed Monitor was supposed to have a 4-inch thick iron plate that was 5 feet by 5 feet square, and these would comprise the primary armor belt. But, unfortunately, the iron mills could not roll a 4-inch plate of this size, and Erickson had to settle with 5 layers of 1-inch thick plate of 3 different sizes. The outer 3 layers would retain their 5 foot by 5 foot square shape, while the inner two layers would be 5 feet by 36 inches and 5 feet by 30 inches, with the smallest plate being at the very back. These five layers of iron would be riveted together, and then they would be spiked to 30 inches of wooden backing. 
This wood would act as more armor, and the spiking process was regarded as just as effective as bolting or riveting, but it saved the shipyard time on construction. As initially called for, Monitor's deck was only supposed to be 18 inches of wood, as Ericsson regarded this as good enough at stopping projectiles from penetrating the deck, but eventually one inch of iron was added on top of this. Due to the majority of Monitor's hull plates not being curved to save on time, the connection between the lower hull and the upper hull was simply by a frame and bolting. The system was good enough at holding the ship together, but it could not withstand extensive weather conditions nor maneuvers such as ramming. On the 16th of November, the first deck beams were installed amidships where the turret would sit, but the beams were left off the bow and stern of the vessel as the iron to cover these had yet to arrive and the Abbott Ironworks would not be able to deliver all of the iron until December. In the meantime, the engine and turret engines were placed in the vessel's hull within the next week. By the 25th of December, all of Monitor's machinery had been placed aboard. On the 31st of December, the engines and boilers were tested for the first time aboard the hull, and Joseph Smith reported, I have the honor to report the engines and propeller of the Ericsson battery have been operated by steam this day and that their performance was highly satisfactory. During the first week of January 1862, the Monitor's turret, having been successfully assembled at Novelty, would be disassembled and transported to Continental at a slow rate. By the 12th of January, the 100-day mark had been hit, and Monitor was still not completed, though it was nearing completion. By mid-January, a few hull plates were still missing from Monitor's hull due to delays in production, and Monitor's launch date was set on the 29th of January, though as this date approached, it would be decided that the 30th of January was more suitable. At 10 a.m. on the 30th of January, 1862, Monitor's hull was successfully launched, just 10 minutes after the last hull plate was installed. John Erickson, Monitor's designer, stood defiantly aboard his vessel as it was launched, with six other men whom were tasked with recovering the ship upon it entering the water. During Monitor's launch, the pilot house had not been installed, and only 25% of the turret had been installed, as not all turret armor plates had been received yet, but by 4.30 p.m. the next day, all 192 turret plates were at Continental ready for assembly. Just after launch, Monitor's draft was 4 feet 3 inches at the bow and 8 feet 11 inches at the stern. Compare this to the near 11 feet that it was supposed to be at. By mid-February, the turret had been fully assembled and tested aboard the hull for the first time. It was capable of revolving two and a half times, going clockwise in 60 seconds, while going counterclockwise, it could only manage one full 360-degree rotation in the same amount of time. On the 19th of February, 1862, Monitor was finally completed and moved under its own power for the first time, venturing out into the New York Harbor and then returning to the Brooklyn Navy Yard. One week later, on the 26th of February, Monitor would receive a full supply of ammunition, and its draft was taken once again. The bow was found to be 9 feet 2 inches deep, while the stern was 10 feet 5 inches deep. The bow and stern were only supposed to have a 2 inch difference, with the bow riding slightly higher, and thus this adjustment would be made by adding ballast to the vessel's tanks at the bottom of the ship. A few minor adjustments were made to the Monitor's primary propulsion engine and its rudder, and it was finally able to leave New York on the 6th of March, 1862, and three days later it would be involved in its infamous battle at Hampton Roads. It took a total of 25 weeks for Monitor to be constructed, and though Ericsson did not necessarily meet his 100-day mark, he was very close to it, and the 25-week time span for constructing such a revolutionary warship at the time was extraordinary. With that having been said, hopefully you have learned something new about Monitor in today's video. If so, why not leave a like and a comment down below. Have a wonderful day.